Jessie. I've been a full-time artist for 10 years and thought it about time I start sharing my painting techniques and adventures. Subscribe to join me every week for a window into my art life. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Art Life. This week's episode is part two of how to paint a wave. Now if you haven't seen part one from last week, go and watch it now because you're going to want to watch it before you see this video. It'll make much more sense, I think. So last week I've been doing, um, the last few weeks, a commission, which is so exciting because it's a surfing, tumbling wave um, painting that I'm doing at the moment. So I've mainly been working with blues and turquoises. This week's gonna be all about the contrasting colors. I don't know if you can see this lovely orange. Um, contrasting colors, when you're working with abstract studies of landscape, they can actually make colours pop in a much more exciting way because it doesn't need to be figurative. I don't only need to stick to the blues with this painting. I'm going to be using greens and yellows and oranges today and all week just trying to make the turquoise stand out as much as I can. So um, hopefully in watching this video you will feel like you've either been in a wave or at the beach because the summer has arrived, it's beautiful and hot outside so I'm feeling this beautiful tumbling wave today. So let's get started. amazing how a few marks of yellow you can still see how the blue wasn't quite dry as it goes a sort of greeny turquoise I don't mind that but how the yellow suddenly lifts all the blue and you can now start to see some volume and weight to the wave because the wave has power I want to feel like it can smash churn like this could be sand it could be huge and a human could be this big or it could just sort of have no sense of scale and it the way it just sits on a wall it could just be infinite. Um, yeah, I think the yellow is doing good. I might add a few lighter shades of yellow and more orange and a little bit of red. I might get rid of it. Um, it's just to test it out. The beautiful thing about oil is whatever you do, it's so um, willing to change. It, it's not like acrylic where it dries and then it's fixed. It moves around. Oil changes every time you add another color, a layer, the pigment kind of evolves. So I'm not too worried about painting um, this one or making any mistakes because if I do make a mistake, I'll let it dry and then I can just completely transform it and it will look very different one day to the next, which is part of the fun. So yeah, I think it's, um, it's addictive. You can get completely lost painting it. You can just suddenly come out of it and be like, oh, feel a bit dazed. I have literally vomited the rainbow onto this wave and it'd be like no what have you done don't worry what will happen is I'll blend a lot of this in it will dry and then I'm going to go over it with glazes which could be another uh, episode I could talk about glazes in paint and how the translucency of doing like dama varnish glazes with oil lets you see the color underneath so you'll see a lot of this warm burnt orange underneath the wave but the painting will be blue and um, the idea is that the underneath colors give a warmth and a vibrancy and a richness that you wouldn't just get if you had just blue so all of this color here even though we're going to go over it and glaze it 
you'll have uh, an essence of it and an impression of it slightly underneath the painting when it's finished. So that'll be a good thing to spot out for. Um, you can kind of see it here where you get the undertones of the turquoise under the yellow. It just makes things look um, luminescent, I think, particularly when the sun hits it or it's well lit when it's finally um, in its home. Uh, it will just have loads of different ways of the colour hitting the paint and it will have movement and it will most importantly be bright and summery, which is exactly what uh, the commission specifications were. Um, commissions are actually a really interesting topic um, to talk about and maybe we should just stop the video and talk a little bit about the nature of patronage with the arts, the relationship between someone who commissions a painting and the artist themselves. Let's do that. Okay, history time. So I'll just include at the bottom of this video a few links to articles on patronage and history of the artist commission that I started to research maybe as a topic to go into on another video because it is fascinating. I think history tidies everything up, but even knowing artists and how personal it can get with doing paintings, I think it's obviously not tidy. There have obviously been huge kind of like amazing stories between people who commission artwork and artists who don't give them what they want or stubbornly refuse to change art that they think is a masterpiece. Um, so yeah, it's because obviously the side, when you think about art and patronage to do with money can be quite contentious because famously artists in history, you know, were paupers. Um, so yeah, this could be a topic we could delve into. And then maybe we could talk about how as a contemporary painter, if you're self-employed and you're making art for a living, how you sell it uh, to buyers and stuff. So all good topics we can, we can think about. Um, but for now, I just want to talk about patronage. I want to talk about the commission and the history of that. Immediately, I think of Renaissance Florence. I think of the Medici family, Brunelleschi, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, all names that were supported by the Medicis, the original art patrons um, in the Renaissance. So yeah, even looking at more recent patrons of the arts, powerhouse names like Peggy Guggenheim and Gertrude Stein. I think these are really interesting women in history that we could maybe learn about in the future just for how they supported the arts. Um, we know that always the way artists work and the way patrons, particularly because they're paying for the art, it can get contentious. We think about the Rockefeller, the situation with the Rockefeller. Uh, so Frida Kahlo's partner, Hola. ah, what was his name? Diego Rivera. Rivera had radical left left-leaning political views at the time and you know Rockefeller had agreed with Rivera about the big mural in advance it was called Man at the Crossroads however when actually painting it Rivera was inspired or passion impassioned by political situations at the time and he changed the painting completely much to Rockefeller's disgust I think even Rockefeller himself was painted in the mural with a prostitute um, it was just kind of Rockefeller paid for it and then he destroyed it the moment like Rivera left New York. Rivera then went back to Mexico and repainted it in 1934, Man Controller of the Universe, so that is available to have a look at. You just see though that relationship with commissions and artists, how it could get really intense, particularly if someone feels like they own art before it's even finished because they've paid for it. So the way money gets involved with art can sometimes be really intimidating. I know I want to give my paintings away for free when someone asks for it. I'm like, here, have it, just have it. And I'm like, no, I, I have to eat. And it's like such a difficult subject to be able to value your work and price it in a way which feels like you're honouring your work and your practice and the years of training you've done but at the same time it can be maybe affordable by someone who adores it rather than just that kind of tiny exclusive part of the art world where one painting is worth two million pounds wouldn't that be nice so thanks for watching part two of how to paint a wave i hope you found it interesting and the aspect of commissions and patrons and artists like an interesting part of the process of doing a commission. Uh, I'm gonna leave it there with this one because now I'm just gonna go into the really fiddly tweaks for ages and it is going to be a tedious job and I don't think it is as fun as the video we have just made with all the swooping wave gestures. Um, so yeah, please like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Jess Oliver Art. Remember, I am new to YouTube, so I'm learning as I go along and the comments you're leaving are so helpful. And if you haven't made a comment, maybe just leave me a comment because I really find them so uh, 
yeah, they, they help me to make new videos. And if you've got any ideas of videos you would like me to make, leave a comment below. So I will see you next week. Please tune in and yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.